Okay, so what I'm reading, what I'm about to read is, um, is not a performance, right? A lot of things that I talk about are not performances anyway, but this is something that I wrote because I had to, as usual. Um, and it's, it's, something, it's somewhat difficult, right? It's something that's somewhat difficult to share, and I just wrote it, and I'll share it now. It's called College 101, Reading, Writing, Rape. A young woman I know, respect, and have grown to adore is heading to college in a few weeks. We'll call her Lillianne. I met Lillianne on summer vacation three years ago when she was about 15. And we both love poetry. So one evening we sat on the porch in our sturdy rocking chairs talking about our favorite poets. I talked about Tazaki Shange, Nisar Kabani, Nikki Finney, and Willie Podomo. And Lillianne told me about Frank X. Walker. She went to her room excitedly to get his first book of poetry, and she came back to read me two really powerful pieces from it. I went home to New York with a new poet to look into and a healthy dose of hope for the future because I'd met Lillianne. So I know Lillianne is ready to go to college. She's intelligent, articulate, mature, well-read, and very thoughtful. She comes from a beautiful and tight-knit family of scholars. But this morning, without warning, I blurted out to her father that I'm afraid. Not in those exact words, but it's what I meant. I know you've done your job, I said, but I'm worried about those kids whose parents didn't. I walked away with a knot in my stomach. I hadn't meant to say that. It was the first time I'd allowed myself to feel the depth of my fear. How do we tell our daughters about the realities of the world we're sending them into without scaring them? My parents sent me to college with pens, pencils, notebooks, matching shirts and jeans. But we never did talk about dating. And no one ever talked to me about sex. And no one ever talked to me about date rape. Despite my books, my determination, and all the well wishes that I'd been sent off with, you could say I went to college unprepared. I ended up a statistic. I was one out of the five women who had been sexually assaulted. I was one of the three quarters of women who was assaulted by a person she knows. And back then, I didn't even have the language to articulate what had happened to me. We tell our children as they head off to college about study habits and eating well, getting enough sleep, making us proud, earning good grades. But what do we tell them about rape? And what can I say to Lillianne that won't alarm her? when the truth of rape on college campuses in the United States is serious cause for alarm. What will I tell my own daughters? You have a right to say no. If you feel uncomfortable with a man, you can leave his presence. Don't be alone with a man. What am I supposed to say? And what can I say that doesn't unwittingly communicate that the onus of preventing rape rests entirely on women. I love you. Be careful. There are men out there who think they have a right to your body, but they don't. Learn capoeira, karate, boxing. Why do I have to tell my daughters and the women I love these horrible things? It will probably not be a stranger jumping out of the bushes it would be more likely to be someone you call a friend. What awful space do we occupy when I can't just say, Lillian, congratulations, have a great year at school. I am so happy for you. Instead, I want to follow Lillian to school and call forth an army to defend her if need be. Rape is a war on women. It's a war on people. 
Let me and let us learn to speak up. Lillian, I'm happy for you. I'm thrilled. You're precious. You're sacred. And I want everyone who comes in contact with you to honor that. But let me tell you what happened to me. We have to tell our stories. And we have to sit down with our sons. We have to talk to them about love and sensuality and sex and the word no. I've been traveling across the country meeting young men on college campuses and I've been creating a list of resources for young men who want to educate themselves and other men about sexual assault prevention. The young men I've been meeting who want to do this work are on the front lines. Basically, they're unlearning everything they've been taught by magazines and television and music and movies and even their peers about women and relationships. The best explanation of consent that I've come across was from a young man named Benjamin. Benjamin was an RA in his dorm and he was the campus shuttle driver. And he's also engaged in rape prevention work. And Benjamin said to me that what he learned was that consent is not the absence of no, it's the presence of yes. Young people, beautiful young people, here's your notebook, here's your pen, here's your laptop, here's your phone, and here, as painful as it is, is the truth.